everybody and welcome back to a hot new episode of Cringe Confessional. Cringe Confessional is the only show on the internet where you could submit your greatest sins and your most cringe moments, the most embarrassing moments of your lives, and we'll all enjoy them together with me and my Twitch chat who are right here today. Thanks for tuning in to Cringe Confessional. We're going to get into some random acts of cringe right now from some anonymous Twitch viewers. It's time to take a hit of the Cringington, shall we? Cheers, my friends. I broke the green screen. Alright, let's do it. One year when I was around 13, I went to a winter camp for kids and was unbearably awkward and nervous the whole time. You, you people One of the are camp 13, events yeah. was telling the kids to go into the forest, find the camp counselors hiding around in the woods, complete a task from them, and the first 10 to come back would get a prize. Hiding? How hard were they hiding? Are they just like behind a tree and then they just pop out? Or like, <laughs> that seems kind of. Up. As I was looking through the woods, I ran into two older girls who were definitely not camp counselors, but told me they were. Oh my god. They told me their task was to drop and give them 20. Okay. Instead of getting down on the ground and doing 20 push-ups, <laughs> my brain registered give me 20 as $20. Yeah. And proceeded to grab my wallet. That's way better. A I bet they love that. A bully for the past year happened to be nearby and saw what I was doing and cut in between us and stopped me before I handed them my money. Your bully saved your- your bully's gonna take the money, isn't he? you no, don't say based. I think the bully's taking the money. I think- I think it's the bully's money now, right? From that point on, he felt so bad for me, <laughs> he never bullied me again and instead acted as my guardian. Oh my god! The look on those girls' face when I pulled out my wallet will never escape my memory. Oh, but hold on, but you made a fr oh, it's over! You made a friend! That's a good story, honestly! That's not cringe! Literally a face turn? I, I, I feel like I would feel worse after that. The bully thinks I'm so stupid, he feels bad for bullying me now. He can derive no joy out of my suffering anymore. Weirdly wholesome. I <laughs> During my first year of university, I commuted from home. There was this one girl who took the same bus as me in the morning, and we actually shared a few classes. Cool. Introduced ourselves one time while waiting for the bus, and I immediately forgot her name. Being a socially inept gamer, I completely missed the opportunity to ask her for it again and just continued making small talk with her. Oh, dude, dude, I hate that when you miss the window. Like, you don't catch the name the first time, and if you ask again, like an Oh, no. When do you ask again? You could do it right away or like an hour later and be like, what was your name again? But you can't do it in between. Just ask again right away. That's the thing, though. This person missed it. They missed the right away. So you have to... Ah, oh, that's hard. That's hard, what do you do? You could do it at the end. Yeah, right as you go, but like if you're already talking. For weeks. It's been <laughs> oh. years now and I still don't know it. Can't you look her up? I feel I feel like you're just dumb. There's gotta be ways to suss out this information. And now for the reason why. Uh huh. This one time, she missed the morning lecture we shared. Yeah. She came up to me and said, Oh my gosh, I slept in. Maybe I should give you my number so you can give me a wake up call in the morning. Oh. Winking. Then yeah. I go, haha, yeah, okay, see ya. And I leave <laughs> her standing there and go to my next class without taking her number. By the time uh, I realized what I had done, there was no saving. Oh, you missed that one too? The double fumble? That's two turnovers. Oh my God, you missed both windows. Ah, you can't go back. By the time I realized you what I had back. done, there it's was done. no saving it. She stopped talking to me and just yeah. gave me a light wave when we ran into each other. Oh my god, that poor We girl. ended up going into different streams, so we stopped sharing classes after oh that year. Oh my god. But, I ran into her during no, my third well, year, and wait, she got insanely hold, freaking hold, hot. Hold, there's a new opportunity. She was already pretty cute yeah. to begin with, but now she was 10, 10 smoking hot. Okay, but, but like, go, f you could, you could try again now, right? You could fix it, it's been a while. You could figure this out, right? Too late? I don't think it's too late. Fix it. Fumble three is coming. No, I don't think you fuck up three times in a row. I think you go for it. Find something. You got two strikes. It is your imperative to fix this issue. I believe in you. Please write back in. Chat's telling you not to do it. I'm telling you to do it. Because either either it works out and you get the, uh, a good ending or you fuck it up again and you get to write back in. Win-win either way. I bet she feels embarrassed. That's the thing. Cringe goes two ways. Cringe is a two-way street. She felt like she, like, came on too strong, you know? Okay, so I was in my freshman year of engineering in college. Okay. One of my classes had a miniature sailboat regatta project. Regatta? This project sucked ass. 
It was a group project, and I somehow became the group leader, because no one else wanted to. That's tough. Over a period of two months we built this janky ass sailboat for this race of everyone's boat. Surely! Our boat was barely functional, uh, and placement okay. in the yeah, race yeah, yeah. isn't gridded so none of us in the group cared to actually learn how to sail, which meant I had to do it. This isn't just Day your the boat sucked, comes, right? Surely and I'm getting something... over a cold. I'm lined up at the starting line with my boat in hand, and during okay. the starting countdown, yeah. I lightly exhale out my nose to calm myself. Uh huh. Big mistake. <laughs> oh my, my face God. explodes in snot. <laughs> oh my I immediately God. start freaking out because all eyes are on me and the few uh, other people in this round. This, this, this? I let the boat go and try my best to hide the evidence of what just <laughs> happened on my sleeve, and pray to God that nobody noticed. Did any of it get on the boat? That's gonna hold it back, actually. That's gonna weigh that thing down. The boat has some new cargo on it. Is this the first snot story, by the way? I don't think we've had a snot story yet. Congratulations, breaking new ground. How progressive. The race starts and the boat completely fails. Who cares? But at this point, I don't care. It doesn't matter. There are more pressing issues. I just launch it out. Yeah. I try to wrap up as soon as possible and get out of there. Right, you escape. I see my team looking at me and just cringing. Oh, visible. I leave and okay. try to go clean myself up. Uh-huh. As I look in the mirror, I see that my shoulder is covered in snot from when I hurriedly wiped my face. Uh... I then remembered that the race was being broadcast to everyone back in the classroom and anyone else that wanted to watch. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, you were on TV? Live stream? There's a whole room of people watching? Who could pause and clip it? I decided then and there that engineering wasn't for me and I'm currently <laughs> planning on living in Argentina for a couple okay. years and hopefully nobody will recognize me when I get back. Hey, hey I'm not exaggerating in the least. Hey, you, 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 that's a good country to go to. World Cup champs! The worst part is it just makes you look like a big baby. Like, some of these stories are, like, you know, embarrassing, but whatever, misconnections. When you have stuff come out of your nose and you don't fix it, you just look like a seven-year-old. You can't clean them up, clean up after themselves. You'd never make it as an engineer. You have to be sophisticated and smart and old. I think the worst thing about this, too, is that engineering majors are all geeks anyway, so they're going to descend on you like a pack of wolves. All these engineering dorks who have done much worse in their lives but haven't done it publicly, and they're just going to jump on you. Hey, enjoy Argentina. I hear it's beautiful. In the sixth grade, I was really into spy thrillers. Okay. Like, I was like so what? enthralled that I learned how like to forge signatures. Handwriting, etc. I thought spies were the coolest shit in the world. Is that the coolest thing a spy does? Forge handwriting? I, I, I just don't understand that you get super enthralled with spies and espionage, and you're just writing shit in a notebook. Excellent work, 47. <laughs> There was a girl in my first period class who I had a crush on. Okay. My dumb sixth grader self thought the whole leaving a note in her desk shtick was the way to go. It's not a bad idea. I decided to forge my friend's handwriting because I was too scared of being made fun of. Oh no, you're a matchmaker. Did they get married? Do they have kids now? Oh, you hooked your buddy up, didn't you? If it ended up going well, I could reveal that it was me. I got to class before anyone else and left the note in her desk. Mm -hmm. I made sure that I had copied my friend's handwriting perfectly and felt like no one would ever catch me. Do people know their friend's handwriting? This is so weird to me. I don't know how this ends. Is she like, ah, that's Darren's handwriting. Oh, Darren, I love you too. Let's run away together. She confronted me about it after Confronting class. Confronted you? And I was scared enough to default to saying it wasn't me or my handwriting after seeing the note. How did she know it was- In fifth you? period, I was called to the guidance counselor's office. They had checked the cameras and caught me placing the note in her desk. They had contacted my parents and gave me a long lecture about privacy and personal boundaries. I was so embarrassed and scared that I doubled down by telling them that I was told to place the note in her desk. Mission failed! Dude, you got zero stars on that one! Also, you're tripling down! Oh, man. Honestly, though, they don't know that. This is a good idea. Lying three times is the right amount of times. Although I do think that a school with cameras checking it because of no- I, I, I feel like this might be a slight overreaction from the board. It's not like you had like a bomb threat. It was a do you like me note. I was so embarrassed and scared that I doubled down by telling them that I was told to place the by note your friend, in her right? desk. By your friend. By my friend. By your friend. Because yeah. it wasn't my handwriting. Uh-huh. Sure. They called the friend to the office and asked him about it. Oh, he said yes. Needless to say that all of the kids told other kids, and they didn't hear the end of this God. until I graduated high school. Wait, so that- wait, that's just how it ends? Wait, so your friend didn't help you out? 
if I was your friend, I would have saved you, dude. I would have been like, oh, yeah, I did that. That's me. Although, no, actually, it's school and being liking somebody is embarrassing. I'm not going to take the fall. I don't like her. She got cooties, bro. <laughs> is this high school? They probably put them in different rooms. The, this school sounds like it, an actual, like, it's Alcatraz. They probably put him in a different room and put, like, Hank from the DEA. <laughs> They had good cop, bad cop on his friend. I would have ragged on him so bad. I don't understand how spies come into this. This is so weird. When I was younger, every one in a while, me and my family used to go play mini golf in this pretty crowded place. Cool, love mini I golf. I usually lost and got mad because I was a pretty competitive kid. Okay. One evening, I was on my usual losing streak, but was in a good mood, <laughs> so I wanted to show my good sportsmanship. <laughs> now at the time, I used to have a friend who always used to drop the F-bomb, and me not knowing what I meant thought it was a light exclamation like gosh darn it, or something like that. Hey dad, good fucking game! <laughs> Damn it dad, you got a great fucking drive! So me, a uh -huh. five-year-old boy, with the intention of sounding like a polite kid. Five? He said he was younger, I didn't know it was five. Shouted God fucking damn it in front of probably 40 other families full of children. My parents were so ashamed and mad at me to this day we call fuck the mini golf word. Oh my god. You were this competitive at five? Heart of a champion. I guess. I don't know. Uh, you got a future of Michael Jordan in the building. Honestly, if I, I, would, I would judge the hell out of you. As a father of a three-year-old, if I heard a kid, you know, a little bit older than my daughter say that, I would judge the hell out of those parents. I don't normally do that. I would be so judgmental. It would feel so good to feel like I'm a better parent than those people. Oh, baby, I'm doing it right. I don't feel that way if, like, a baby's crying at the supermarket or on a plane. It's like, okay, babies cry, right? That's fine. I'm not mad at the parent. That's not bad parenting. The five-year-old said, God fucking damn it. Ah, those are bad parents. I'm nothing like that. I'm a good dad. I go to college out of state, but still keep up with a lot of my high school friends. Okay. Last Christmas, we decided to do a secret Santa. I thought it would be really funny to get one of my friends a mousy pad with an anime girl on it with, let's just say, plenty of wrist support, in the form of very... Very large breasts that extend beyond the second plane. Why did you say, let's just say, and then explicitly say what happened? You acted like you were going to give a euphemism, and then you just explained to the product like an Amazon description. You could have just said, offered a lot of wrist support. But no, you said, offered a lot of wrist support with giant titty boobies that would bounce if you shook them. I get it. It's time to fly back home for Christmas. Woohoo! At the airport. I'm going through security just fine. I didn't even consider this angle. I, I forgot you had to go through security. I didn't even think of that. Put that shit on the checked bag. That goes on the checked bag. No one will ask you about the checked bag. Don't bring that on the carry-on. Well, chatter, what happened? I place my bags on the conveyor, and while I'm waiting to grab them on the other side, the big machine starts beeping. <laughs> big ass titties detected. I forgot to take my laptop out oh of my, my backpack. Oh my god! As the big security man searches my backpack, I watch, in horror, as he pulls out the mousy pad <gasps> in all of its degenerate glory for everyone in the airport to see. He examines it for a good five seconds, looks at me and says nice, and then sets it aside. Worst moment of my conscious life. Ah, ha, ha, ha. He seemed worse. Actually, that guy seemed worse. Uh, you're fine. It, TSA has, has seen horrors you can't possibly imagine. I feel like that TSA agent, that wasn't even the craziest thing that happened to him on that day. TSA agents work long shifts, and they have to look through a lot of bags. You think about it more than he does. Not that cringe. This was last year. Okay. I really liked this girl Fresh I had been talking to for a while now. Yeah? We synergized very well and it was all going swimmingly. Swimmingly? I had never felt so connected with someone before, and eventually I wanted to muster the courage to tell her. Okay. I decided that a good way to get rid of my fear was to record audios of myself confessing. Audios of yourself confessing? Like you're talking about how much you like her, but not to her, but on tape in the past? This sounds like a movie. This is some Scott Pilgrim shit. Is this girl quirky? If she's quirky, this just might work. That way, 
I'd get all the cringe out of the way and be able to ask her the best way I possibly could. Oh, are you practicing? Oh, you're practicing. You're fine. Never mind. This is fine. You're practicing. It's like how Sims practice their charisma in the mirror. It's like me when I do YouTube intros when I'm not on stream. That shit takes me like 30 minutes. <laughs> Eventually, after like five recordings, I felt good about myself and decided it was time to send her what the real send one. Her? When I looked down on my phone, I wasn't recording audios in an app. I was sending audios to her. No. And before I could delete them, they were already read. No. We've been together for over a year now and growing strong, but dude, I hid in my blanket that entire day after that. No way. You sent her five different audio recordings of how much confessing your love for her in different. W dude, that's quirky as hell. And it worked. That girl is the quirkiest. Please send me a picture of you two on Twitter. If you could just show me like a happy picture, you guys are probably quirky as hell. I bet you guys have matching office t-shirts. <gasps> is this it? Yo! Matching lantern core shirts. That's unbelievable. Meant for each other. Actually a W. How did that work? <laughs> I finished college. At 21 years old, Congrats. and now I am stuck working most of my time. Mm. On my free time, I will only play games. Society's a bitch. Occasionally, I talk with old friends from school time. After some months, we discover that we are very sedentary. Time to get then out we and decided get up. it should be good to play volleyball. Oh, just like the it anime. easily enough to play in a public park without people noticing that we suck. Be honest, was it from the anime? Was it because of the anime? I know it was. On the big day, Talking we finally about. reunite. It was very nice to see everyone reunited. The park yeah, was crowded, cool. but we could find a nice place to play. Uh -huh. There was already a net. Nice. Unfortunately, we find a problem. There was a family there eating their snack. Uh -huh. I decided to go there to ask them to leave so we could play. It was a big family, but they understood. All right. Instead of leaving, they uh challenged us to play, oh, and I thought no. it would be fun to play with a family. Since they wouldn't play that well, it should be an even game. Okay, either this is a professional dodgeball family, like the Partridge family, but for dodgeball, or he's gonna beam a little kid in the face. You found a level 38 side quest out of nowhere. They had more than 15 people, so they decided to separate groups first the male adults played. Any group of 15 people probably has somebody that's really good at volleyball in it. You can take any sample of 15 people in the United States and one of them will be good at volleyball and will carry the team. They destroyed us. Yeah. We could barely play. Yes. We thought it couldn't get any worse. Yeah. So the children of the family started to play against us. Oh, hell and now no. we had a chance. All the kids are six foot eight. Oh no. Those are some tall ass kids. The result was actually worse and everyone was tired. Oh we were God. preparing to go out and oh they stopped God. us and asked to play one Not last one game more. which we Don't agreed. Do it. Not one this time more. we played against the old people. The team was what looked like us. Two old grandmas around 60s, one mother around 40s and two children. No surprise that we lost again. Later we discovered that it was their volleyball <laughs> net and they did that because we tried to kick them out of their volleyball court. <laughs> I think god. about this every now and then. Oh my god! It's the volleyball family! They're the Harlem Globetrotters of volleyball! It's a whole traveling family of over 15 people, and they all play volleyball. They just spent the entire afternoon smurfing. There's not even money on the line here, by the way. There's nothing they should do that for. They're just doing that to, to, to humiliate you. This is actually a Darman video. That's un- Believable. Wait a minute. What's this? Hold on. Hello there. Oh my god. Hi. Hello there. Welcome and thanks for calling in to Cringe Confessional. Everybody say hello to Simply, famous twitch.tv streamer and Super Mario Speedrunner. What's good, brother? Yo, not much, bro. Just chilling in this blizzard right now, you know, just stroking my shit. I feel I that. Just chilling hey, shit. me too, but they can't see it because I'm below the cam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know how Let's we do. Let's fucking go. Let's go. All right. So you you called it a cringe confessional. I would love to know your story. Would you like to confess some cringe? Oh God. All right. All right. All right. It, it's not that raunchy, but just so you know that this story got deleted out of my mind because it was so cringe. <laughs> Okay. And then someone said something in chat one day and it triggered the memory and it hasn't left since. Okay. I was probably like 17, maybe 16. 
Okay. I wanted to get over the fear I had of getting rejected by girls. Sure. It's a good time to do it. Yeah, because I was just like, man, I cannot handle this. Like, bro, I'm so scared of girls and stuff. So I was like, I decided I live near the Mall of America. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the Mall of America and I'm going to try talking to like 10 girls. That was what I told myself. I was like, I can't leave unless I talk to 10 girls. Sure. Um, okay. As, or, or get rejected by 10 girls. And I was like, all right, I can't leave unless I do this. So I get there, but I'm not talking to, I'm not, I'm just like going, I go up to the girls <laughs> and I'm just like, can you reject me? And that's, that's all I ask. You're cheating. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not making an yeah. honest effort. You just want this to, you're, you're, you're running through it at full speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like, it you're was any like, percentage. I wasn't even trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, essentially. And yeah. I, it didn't help at all. It literally didn't help with okay. anything. It was just fucking terrible. And that's uh, pretty much it. That's pretty, that's pretty tough. That's pretty bad. Okay. Did, yeah. did anybody? Okay, so you didn't even try to make a connection. I was gonna say, did anybody give you a number at all? Did you get any kind of interest or? No numbers. Some of them were like with guys and, <laughs> um, <laughs> not like I went up to a guy. I like went up to a girl that was with a guy. <laughs> Wait, so you, you kind of set yourself <laughs> up for failure there, brother. You know the answer. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you never know. It could be a friend or something. You know? Could be a brother. Yeah. Sure. Ah, that's tough, man. That, but I, but I feel you. You gotta knock it out. That's part of the. That's part of the experience of being young, right? Yeah. I yeah, feel that's that. basically it, man. I feel that's that. Basically it. Listen, man, I really appreciate you calling in. Listen, that's what this is for. It's for getting it all out there. Thank you. I, I'm glad I had this opportunity to have this platform for everyone to um, just get it out there. And, and now I feel like I can rest easier at night. So thank Good. you so much, going. I'm glad. Get some rest. Now everybody knows. And uh, you take care of yourself simply. Thanks for calling in, brother. Of course. Bye, Coney. Have a good night. Peace. Take care. See ya. Man, what a story. He did, bro, he just, <laughs> just the fact he's asking directly, please reject me. He's just trying to check it out. That shit probably took 15 minutes. He's not even doing this to like, I don't know, make somebody happy. This isn't for anybody. This is for self-improvement. He, oh man. Maybe it helped though. It didn't. Okay. All right. <laughs> you just lock in on 10 women. Any age, any any family status, you know? It could be a mom there with her kids. Just 10 women of any type. <laughs> just lock the fuck in. Back in high school, there was this girl I Thank hung you. out You're with welcome. all the time during marching band. We would often sit next to each other on bus rides to competitions kids, and geek. chat about various <laughs> nudie shared interests. She asked me out to our winter formal dance with one of the most detailed and heartfelt invitations I've ever seen. She was very clearly into me, and I was very, very gay. Clearly not gay enough. Bro, you weren't trying hard enough. How gay were you? Like out of 10? I was in the closet and thought that- Ah, uh, okay, so you- okay. So you- you were- you were- you were very gay, but not gay outwardly. I understand and thought that having a girlfriend could keep my parents and other peers at school from finding out about my sexuality. Oh shit, this sounds so like I a So I accepted sitcom. her invitation and we had a decent time at the dance. This shit is a family It guy. was clearly awkward, but I think she interpreted it as standard high school dance uh, awkward instead of my date isn't into me awkward. Right, of course. After the dance, kids, she invited yeah, me to her awkward. place to watch TV, during which she got Let's just say cuddly. Ooh. Once I realized what was going on, I made the single most panicked decision I could. Yeah? I didn't want to reveal to her that I was gay, so I just stood up, <laughs> turned around, <laughs> looked her in the eye. Ah, uh, yeah? Hold? Hold? And gave the single most bullshit explanation for why we should break up I could think of. Okay. I told her that I have the power to see into the future, and that every future where we were together wound up with one of us dying. So obviously we have to break up to prevent our inevitable deaths. <laughs> Not what I thought he was gonna say. I don't know if anybody predicted that. You, you final destinationed it? You Doctor Stranged it. All right. Did she go for it? I told her she obviously didn't buy it. Of course not. I obviously. left before she had a chance to respond. <laughs> you said it and ran out the door? To keep the air of mystery, I would be more into you. If I'm a girl, you're dangerous. Ooh, he's so bad. I can change him. <laughs> we never talked again. 
and I found out that she dropped out and transferred to a different school halfway through the spring semester. Holy fuck, she was careful! She took that seriously! Oh, fuck, I'm gonna die? This guy's too hot, I gotta get the fuck out of here. If only he was gay. If he was gay, this all could be avoided. Why did he have to love me? She is I wound super up suspicious. coming out shortly after, but anyway, okay. and apparently that information oh, made it to no. her new school. So a rumor quickly spread that she turned me gay. <laughs> you actually ruined this poor girl's entire high school life. You ruined her entire high school career. The entire four years that she had at this school are ruined because of you. So basically, I ruined yeah, this poor girl's entire high school experience purely yeah. because I was a selfish asshole who used her to convince people that I was straight. And then wound up coming out as gay shortly after anyway. Okay, but what a way to do it. What a way to make that happen. You have made an indelible mark on that young woman's life. She'll never forget you. When would she write into Cringe Confessional? Hey, if you're listening, please write in. I would love to know how that went. This is one of the best stories we've had, I think so. Not one of the cringiest stories we've had, but fantastic story nonetheless. Well done. Thank you for writing in. Once when I was in seventh grade, I had a crush on this Pretty girl name. named Juliet. Juliet and I met in English class where we really became quick friends. One day, we were told to write a poem for an assignment and then recite it in front of the class. Uh huh. I decided to write a poem as a confession of how I feel about Juliet. Oh. I also considered that because her name was the same as the Shakespearean character, I would write the poem as Shakespearean as I could, with my teacher giving me notes on my draft. Don't like that. The day came to recite and I also thought it would be a good idea to act out my emotions as overdramatic as possible. Oh my god. By the end of it, I had some looks and some applause from the other students. Applause. Okay. And Juliet? She said I don't like Shakespeare and I don't like you that way. Oh, oh my god. However, as the father of a girl named Juliet, I have set her up for Shakespeare bullshit her entire life. You were probably in a long line of guys that thought they were being cutesy, and she's annoyed as shit. Doesn't mean she had to do that in front of the class, though. At least she was honest and didn't tell you that she did like you, but if you stayed together, then one of you would die. About a week later, my English teacher returned oh, my grade. poem with a 95 grade that's and a, a separate piece grade. of paper next to it. Please do not bother my daughter again. To this day, I'm convinced my teacher purposely set me up as she more likely knew Juliet didn't like Shakespeare. I feel like teachers aren't allowed to do that. She actually set you up with a long con. And for what? Her daughter was just as embarrassed. Did she? Did, uh, what did the teacher think? Like, what was her end game? I'm actually curious. As a teacher, that's foul. What was she doing? Why did she do that? For the drama? For the tea? <laughs> I, I don't believe this story. I don't think it's real. Back in elementary school, there was a girl I had a huge crush on. Okay. In fourth grade, I joined an after-school gym class because as a kid, I had far too much energy. I would run at least two miles every day during recess and still had too much energy. <laughs> Jesus. To my surprise, All right. she also was in the same after-school gym class. One day after school, we played kickball. Again? We ended up Something on opposite the teams. Ball. When it was my Hit turn her. to kick, Hit I her. kicked a line drive <laughs> straight at her causing her to scream and collapse to the floor. Oh I didn't see her at school for a few days. What? Eventually I saw her at school one day with her arm in a cast. I finally decided to muster up some courage and speak to her. What? I asked what had happened to her arm. She turned to me, looked me dead in the eye, <laughs> and said, You did this. I kicked the ball so hard that I broke Are her Are you arm. the kid for- I was so horrified and ashamed that I never spoke or even looked at her ever again. Are you Dash from The Incredibles? How strong are your legs, dude? How hard did you kick the ball? This dude has the zoomies all day every day. Has to run for six hours a day or he'll die. And he kicks a kickball at a girl and her arm breaks? This is the one arm girl origin story? It all comes together. This is the one armed witch. Yeah, it was definitely the fall. Yeah, she fell down. You didn't do that. You kicked the ball. She didn't catch it. That's on her. If she caught it with her arm, she would still have the use of both of her arms to this day. That's on her elbowzo. 
but W Chat because that's going to do it for Cringe Confessional, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. What was your favorite story? I know mine. Oh, baby, I know mine. I actually have two new favorites. Comment below which one you loved. Thank you so much for watching. Let's check in on Twitch chat YouTube. Let's see how they're doing. All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cringe Confessional. We'll see you on the next one. Remember to stay safe and keep cringing. But don't do cringe things. Just cringe at other people. That's, uh, oh, gonna, probably should have worked that one out. Probably a good, like, there's probably a good, like, catchphrase I could do here. I'll work on it in the future.